our next guest from Four American Pies, Two Legally Blondes, and a gaggle of Christopher Guest movies. She is absolutely great as the weird and wealthy Tawny McQuad in The White Lotus on HBO Max. Please welcome Jennifer Coolidge. <laughs> Wow, what an audience. Wow. Well, listen, people are... I don't know if you're aware of this, but I, I ever since we started watching The White Lotus, which we consumed immediately, yeah. I was like, we've got to get Jennifer Coolidge on the show. You're yeah. so fantastic oh, in that show. Oh, my God, thank you. I mean, like, on, an, on a level beyond what we even might come to expect from even our our very, very top actors and actresses. Oh, I mean, it really, I thought it was yeah. such a funny and odd performance <laughs> in all the best possible ways. Oh, that's you, so nice of you. Well, I, I mean, I mean it, I really do. You, uh, you know, Sandra Bullock was here a few months ago. Yes. And she was talking about working with you at a, it was a bar in New York, Yeah, right? it was a restaurant and a... And a yeah, restaurant bar. Yeah, it was called yeah. Canistel's, yeah. And, right. Yeah. Do you remember that time well? She remembered a little yeah. bit of, of I remember it. it so much better than Sandra did. Oh, you do? Yes. Oh, good. Because, well, I mean, I think, you know, just because maybe uh, I was there longer than her, and um, I just remember those days, because, uh, you know, uh, well, let's just say, you know, Sandra really had her act together, and she was the hostess and everything, but, but, you know, I was, you know partying a lot, you know, in those years. Uh -huh. and, um, so it was like sort of 50-50 whether I made the shift or not. You know? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but I couldn't get fired. For some reason, there was this very forgiving uh, maitre d' Moreno, and um, <laughs> all of us wanted to be actresses. You know, we all had, you know, in all these little white coats, and um, and yeah, and I had this, I always, my coat was always kind of stained, and um, so, um, <laughs> so one day Moreno said, you know, you have to come to work with a white coat, Jennifer. You can't have a stained coat, whatever. And so I said, okay. So I just started, and you know, like the laundry mat was like a mile from my my apartment and everything. So I, I just started buying white jackets every shift. <laughs> and um, when, what? yeah, and and I had, <laughs> I thought I had close to a thousand jackets. What? No I way. Job. Yes, but I so I did make it to a lot of shifts, you see. But it went for years. It went for years, and you know most I, hospitals don't have that many white jackets. No, I know. And I was like, you know, I actually had friends come over, and I'm like, what could I do with these jackets? Do, do you think there's anyone that would like these jackets? And everyone was like, no, I use red. No, no. But um, and I tried to get um, I tried to get uh, Fourth of July off because that was a big night at the restaurant, and I um, I ended up. I uh, it was one of those nights you really couldn't, you know a no show. So um, I went to Roosevelt Hospital and found an ambulance driver and he strapped a patch and a white thing around my head and um, and I called the restaurant and um, I got Moreno. He answered and I go, Moreno, it's Jennifer Coolidge and you're not going to believe this, but I was at a party last night and someone put a cigarette out in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he and Miranda said, "Well, Jennifer, I, that's too bad. You'll have to come to work anyway. So I'll see you soon." And so then I was like, "But I had the whole contraption on, you know." And I was and I did. I went and showed up, and I knew this would happen. I knew once he saw me with the whole thing, and yeah, and and once he saw me, um, yeah, he he said, "You you can't work here tonight." <laughs> oh, really? And then uh, and I went out, and uh, yeah. And then, <laughs> How long did you keep the bandage on? Because the cigarette burn is serious. I know. I had. That's the thing. I had. There were other waitresses that lived in Hell's Kitchen, so I had to like, I had to keep that on way too long. And, <laughs> and then what happens is, you know, if you ever have an eye patch, you know this. Like your one eye like works harder than the other. So then it sort of messed up my vision for a short while. It, <laughs> <laughs> Another good reason to call right, in. Right. 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 This I, um, now I'm understanding because Mike White, who's really a brilliant writer, um, uh, yeah, he yeah, came yeah. up with yeah. this show right. and really took advantage of the situation, the COVID situation you guys were in, and this yeah. hotel that didn't have any customers really at the time. Right. And he wrote yeah. this part specifically for you. And yeah. I was, you know, I was thinking, like, why did he write this? But I feel like I understand it a little bit more after hearing that story. <laughs> did. 
did you guys know each other very well? Um, well, we did. We played a girlfriend and boyfriend in a movie. Uh, this uh, Jared Hess, you know, Napoleon Dynamite. Um, oh, right, ma- right. In this movie, uh, we were a boyfriend and girlfriend in um, Gen- uh, Gentlemen Broncos. And it was a okay. great movie. And so I knew him from that, you know, and we had been friends over the years and stuff. But I feel like, you know, Africa, going to Africa, I, you know, he, he's his... Uh, his boyfriend couldn't make the trip, and so it was a very romantic trip. Planned. Oh, you went to Africa with him? Okay, yes, all right. Yes, I went to Africa with Mike. And, um, and so uh, it was very, you know, intimate. You know, the tents are, you know, they're beautiful, but you're, you're, you know, you're right next to each other in them. And so he got to see a very unedited version of me. You <laughs> see, on vacation. Um, um, and yeah, and I, you know, thank God it was like White Lotus. I mean, he was looking for a crazy lady or something. To play, you know, I mean, I would have gone differently and someone else would have gotten this part. But I think he was sort of amused by how uh, strange I was on the trip. I <laughs> you, um... I did, I did. There's a scene where you guys were on a boat, right? And right. Um, you know the one where you have your mom's yeah. ashes. Yeah. And you give this great, crazy speech. Yeah. Th- th- was that uh, at all improvised or was that written as... Uh, yeah, there was, there was a little imp- improvisation, just, be, just because um, I, I, I think it was to overcome the embarrassment of being surrounded by my castmates. Everyone, you couldn't really tell when we were filming, but everyone was like six inches away on that boat. It was a, Mike said we were just going to get us this big boat. It was this little boat. We were all really, really close to each other. And of course, I have terrible seasickness. I warned everybody. I said, I have to get very seasick. This isn't going to be good. And Mike was like, no, it's going to be fine. We're going to put this little thing around your wrist. Oh, yeah, those you know, don't those, work. No, no, no. Yeah, so, no. So, no, I had a big bucket, and, and, I, and I was so close to everyone doing it, like getting sick in this bucket. And I got, I got small. I got sick on the little boat on the way to the bigger boat. I mean, I get sick, you know, I get sick on a swing. Well, that eulogy monologue was easily one of the best um, uh, performances by an actor who was vomiting oh. um, <laughs> ever. <laughs> But, you know, I think, you know, and I do want to say there was an advantage. You know, my mother had died, uh, you know, earlier than she was supposed to. That's yeah, lucky so, for you. So yeah. that was, yeah. like, you know, I mean, there were yeah. parallels of, mm-hmm. you know, the character that sort of... it. That's all... looking at the bright side, isn't it, Jennifer? <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Like, it was, there was yeah. a lot of things that, you know, my Mike sort of collaborated my weirdness with ah. it. And so it's sort of... And, you know, I, I, I get uh, too hot and overheated, and that really worked for the being in Hawaii and everything. So it all worked to my advantage. Like, even my way of breathing uh, sort of worked for the character. Because it, I, it, it couldn't possibly have been better. There's, he was absolutely nice. right picking you for that role. I mean, it was nice. absolutely perfect. And I know you're doing a Super Bowl commercial for Uber Eats, right? Yeah. Did they know you were a vomiter before they signed you on this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they did. No, you know what's so funny about that you say that? Because, um... Yeah, I, I, I don't know how I got that, because I was like, did they watch White Lotus and go, like, she's our girl? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to show, actually, some uh, uh, outtakes from your commercial in a oh, moment here. Know. And the White Lotus is on HBO Max. Jennifer Coolidge, everybody. Thank you, Jennifer. We'll be back with Still Vanessa. <laughs> Can I eat this? <laughs> There's a yummy in my tummy. If you like that video, then put a ring on it. Click the subscribe button below. Uh oh, oh.